My, my name is uh, Colonel Moses Williams from St. Andrew's College, Chitobo, and I'm glad to take you through number seven, part A. Number seven, part A, we need to describe the translation T1. So if we look at this translation critically, we observe that it is likely to be uh, a reflection, and we are now going to just prove whether it's a reflection and get the line of reflection. So, in these matrix transformations, if we are writing this, this matrices, we start with the image of I and J. This one, we generate them from using the unit square. So, I'm going to bring out that image on, uh, on my plane and we see. So, my unit square is here. This is mine. I, this is my J. So, but now I have my a image of I is 0, negative 1. This means that my X is 0 and my Y is negative 1. It means that our image of I is there. Then this means that our one X is negative 1 and then our Y is 0. So, we shall see our image of J there. So if we, you look at this image and you see the distance here and distance here, you see that if we project a line in the middle there, we shall clearly be able to see reflection. So let's let's try and see whether it can come out if I project a line there. Yes, and you know in reflection, the, the image distance equals the object distance. So and also we need to complete a perfect square so if, if i complete my perfect square here you see that it is real and also here you see that it is actually real so this becomes a reflection so this line how do we get this line it is clearly known and seen that this line this line it is clearly known and seen that this line this line is just we, if we pick a value of uh, a value here and we find it that let's take our 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 point on that which is negative one negative one one so we are seeing that our x is a negative and our y is a positive therefore the line is y equals to negative x so we can rearrange this and we have y plus x equals to zero. Therefore, this is the equation of this line. So this line is y plus x equals to what? Zero. So as we are seeing here, we have now obtained our line of reflection. So how do we now describe our, our transformation? We now come and say, therefore, t1 is a reflection reflection on the line our line is there y plus x equals to zero so this is how we describe it this is how we describe that field transformation t1 so two we can clearly observe that we can pull out a certain figure and it gives us identity matrix there. So let's pull out two and we see. So if we pull out two, we shall have a one, zero, zero, one. And this is clearly seen by everyone that this, this is an identity matrix. So, these two become the scale factor, the scale factor of our enlargement, and with the center S, 0, 0. So, from this, we can just go on and describe the matrix. So, matrix, the matrix of transformation T2, we can now describe it fully. So our T2 is 
an enlargement of now when we put the of we bring the scale factor of scale factor two uh -huh, with the center center zero zero or if, if you don't want to say this you can simply simply say t2 is an enlargement of scale factor 2 with the origin as the center of enlargement and you're done this is how we describe the matrix transformation t2 and remember uh, uh, my name is uh, Amber Felix from St. Henry's College Tobu and I'm here to take you through part C and part D. For part C, we are required to find a single matrix that would map P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime back to triangle P Q R. So this is what we had. We had P Q R, the initial triangle, which was mapped onto P prime Q prime R prime by matrix T1 and P prime Q prime was mapped onto P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime by matrix T2. So we all know that if they tell us to get a single matrix that maps PQR to P to P double prime, Q double prime, we get this matrix, we pre multiply it with this matrix. But in this case, they have said we should get a matrix that will map that will map P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime back to the original triangle. So if we get the matrix that will map P prime P Q R to P double prime, Q double prime, and R double prime, and we get its inverse, we shall be able to get the matrix that will map P double prime. Q double prime, R double prime, back to the original matrix. So this is what we mean. T2, we pre multiply it with T1. And our, our, T1, our T2 was, was 2, 0, 0, 2. And our T1 was 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. So when you're multiplying, you multiply draw by column. So here we're going to have Two times zero is a zero plus zero times negative one, which is also zero. a zero. zero. So here I have zero plus zero. Then we have two times negative one, negative, negative two. one, negative two plus zero times zero, which is also zero. zero. So we have negative two plus zero. We have 0 times 0, which is a 0, then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I have 0 plus negative 2. Sorry. Then we multiply 0 times negative 1, which is 0, then 2 times 0, which is also 0. 
So we add here it is zero negative two negative two and zero. So this is the matrix that will map PQ PQR to P double prime Q double prime R double prime. But in the question we are required to find the matrix that will map P double prime Q double prime R back prime double prime back to the original the original triangle. So if you get the matrix, the, the, the inverse of this one, we shall be able to get the matrix that maps this one back to the original triangle. So we have T to T1 and we indicate that we are finding the what? The inverse. But we all know that the inverse is equal to 1 over the terminant times the adjunct. The adjoint. So this is this is our matrix, and we have this one as the major, and this one as the minor. So in getting the determinant, we shall get the major, the, 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 the product of the major minus the product of the what? Of the minor. So I think we first find the determinant of this matrix. We shall have 0 times 0 minus negative 2 times negative 2. This is 0 minus negative minus negative 4. Minus, minus 4 because we are multiplying a negative times a negative. And our determinant will be negative. negative 4. Now, we say the inverse. This is, excuse me. This is the inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant times the adjoint. So we have. We have well, in, in part B, we calculated the coordinates of what? Of this, of, in, in, this is our, this is our matrix that we, we are finding the, the inverse of this matrix. So we are going to change, for the adjunct we shall, we are supposed to change the, the digits in the major, and then we multiply negative one to each of the digits in the what? In the minor, in the minor line. So we have one over negative four, and our adjoint is 0, here we have 2, here we have 2, and here we have 0. So when we multiply this one times this one, we get 0. Negative 4 times 2, we get negative, negative 1 half. Negative a half. Then negative four times two, we get negative a half. Negative a half. And then neg uh, negative four times zero, we shall get zero. zero. So this is the matrix that will map P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime back to the original triangle which is P, Q and R. Yes, we continue with part D which requires us to find the coordinates of P, Q and R. So in part C we have found the, the single matrix that can map P double prime, Q double prime and R double prime back to the, to the what? To the original object. So if you use that single matrix and we pre-multiply it with the coordinates, the ones we have found in C of P double prime, Q Q double prime and R double prime, we can be able to find the coordinates of the original triangle P, Q and R. So we shall use row by column. And this will be our solution like we have been doing. So we shall have 0 times 
zero, which is zero. The negative half times two, which is which is negative one. Then here I have zero plus zero, zero plus negative seven, then negative five plus zero, then two plus negative zero plus negative two, then zero plus and then we come to the addition. So we have zero plus zero plus negative one, which is negative one, zero plus negative seven, which is a negative seven, then zero plus negative two, which is a negative two, zero plus zero, we have zero, negative five plus zero, negative five, then zero plus zero, we have zero. So these are the coordinates. Actually, this this will be this is P, this is Q, and this is R. So we come and state the coordinates as, and we say P is negative one, zero. Q is negative seven, negative five, and R is negative two, and Zero. So I found the coordinates of P, Q, and R. Thank you, my brother Felix, for taking us through the numbers. Allow me once again take you through part E of number seven. Part E of number seven wants us to get the ratio of area of triangle PQR to area of the image p double prime q double prime r double prime so from uh, this we know that our area scale factor is given by the determinant of t2 t1 so this time around we have our determinant as negative 4 so what we have to know is the negative sign there shows us that the transformation involves a reflection therefore we have to get the, the, the magnitude of our determinant therefore we get the magnitude of the determinant t2 t1 so here the magnitude of negative 4 which will give us area of pq P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime, out of area of P, Q, R. So, right now, we can, because what we need should be on the left, and what we already have should be on the right. Therefore, I, I will arrange to bring this, this side, and then I take the, this one, the other side. Therefore, our area of Q double prime, Q double prime, R double prime, out of area of P, Q, R. Now, the magnitude becomes the positive, therefore, equals to 4. So, we, we can, any whole number is out of 1. But what is the question telling us? The question is telling us to get the ratio of area of PQR to the area of P double prime, Q double prime, and R double prime. Therefore, we have to get the reciprocal of both of them. Therefore, if I have here my area of PQR out of area of P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime will be equal to a quarter therefore this therefore if I'm expressing it in ratio form this is one two four and therefore I conclude and say therefore the ratio of the area of triangle PQR to area of triangle P double prime Q double prime R double prime is equal to one two four